Today we're going to talk a little bit about one of my favorite subjects, and that's the subject of Lie algebras. And we're going to do what's considered a fairly standard exercise involving Lie algebras when you're just learning the subject for the first time, kind of at the beginning. So let's first recall the definition. So a Lie algebra is a vector space, we'll call it L, and that can be over any field together with a bilinear map, which we'll call this bracket from L cross L to L. And that satisfies two conditions. Well, I guess two conditions in addition to the bilinearity. That is that the bracket of X with itself is equal to zero for all X inside of L. So this is called the alternating condition. Next, you've got this condition that for all x, y, z inside of L, the bracket of x with the bracket of y, z plus the bracket of z with the bracket of x, y plus the bracket of y with the bracket of z, x is equal to zero. This is known as the Jacobi identity. And before we get started with our example, I'd like to point out that I'm building a full course on Lie algebras on my second channel, Math Major. And this second channel is ad-free. And we're able to make it ad-free because of the generous support of the patrons. So if you're interested in supporting the channel a bit more, you could think about joining our Patreon. And if you wanna check out this full course that's being built, make sure to go over to the second channel and subscribe. Okay, so let's see what we wanna do today. Our goal is to classify all two-dimensional Lie algebras. Okay, so let's maybe get started. So let's suppose that L is a two-dimensional Lie algebra. And so since it's two-dimensional, it is spanned by two linearly independent vectors. So in other words, it has a basis of two vectors. And let's say that those two vectors are called V and W. So like I said, in other words, the basis is made up of these vectors V and W. And now we'd like to look at two cases. And one of the cases is fairly simple and the other one is gonna require a little bit more. So the first case is that the bracket of V with W is equal to zero. And now I'd like to show that in this case, in fact, we have something called an abelian Lie algebra. And an abelian Lie algebra is one where the bracket is always zero. So let's see if we can show that. So let's maybe take an arbitrary X and Y inside of L. But if we take an arbitrary X and Y inside of L, we can write X as AV plus BW. And we can write Y as CV plus DW. And here AB, C and D are inside of that field. So if you're a little uncomfortable with that, you could just think of those as being rational numbers or real numbers or complex numbers or something like that. And now let's look at the bracket of X with Y. And note that that is AV plus BW being bracketed with CV plus DW. And now here's where we're gonna use the bilinearity of this bracket. So that's gonna be equal to AC times the bracket of V with V. So we're able to take A and C out because those are scalars. And then next we'll have plus AD and then the bracket of V with W and then plus BC, the bracket of W with V and then finally BD and the bracket of W with W. But let's notice that we get some pretty quick simplification. Notice that the bracket of V with V is zero by our alternating condition right here. The bracket of W with W is zero because of our alternating condition right there. And then the bracket of W with V can easily be shown to be negative the bracket of V with W. So that gives us the following setup. We have AD minus BC times the bracket of V with W. But let's notice that in this first case, we've got the bracket of V with W is zero. So that means all of this is zero and this whole thing collapses to zero. So that means in this first case where the bracket of the two non-equal basis vectors is zero means that we have an abelian Lie algebra. 
In other words, for all x and y inside of L, we have the bracket of x with y is equal to zero. So like I said, L is abelian. Okay, so now that we've covered that case, let's cover the other case where the bracket of VW is not zero. Okay, so now moving on to the second case where the bracket of V and W is non-zero. Now we're gonna start with a similar first step. So let's take x to be a v plus b w, and we'll take y to be c v plus d w. Again, where a, b, c, and d are inside of that field. And now let's recall this calculation that we previously did that showed that bracket of x with y was equal to a d minus b c times the bracket of v with w. But now, since x and y were arbitrary, what does that really tell us? Well, that tells us for all x and y inside of L, we have the bracket of x with y is equal to some number. So I'll just put that number as this like box right here. So it's some number times the bracket of v with w, where v and w are those basis vectors. So the bracket of the basis vector seems to play an important role here. So now where are we gonna go from here? Well, now we wanna build a new basis for this vector space L out of this fact right here. So let's do that. So let's maybe set, I'll call it capital X, equal to the bracket of V with W. And then after that, let's take any z inside of L such that the bracket of capital X with z is not zero. So that's gonna be possible because we have a non-abelian Lie algebra here. Okay, so next that means that the bracket of capital X with z is equal to alpha times capital X because anything of this form is a multiple of vw, but vw is capital X. And then by our choice right here, this is for some alpha not equal to zero. But now let's do a little bit of scaling here. So let's set capital Y equal to one over alpha times z and notice that that gives us the bracket of X with capital Y equal to capital X. And that's just because we've scaled this alpha out of here. Okay, nice. So next up what we wanna do is show that this capital X and this capital Y form a new basis for our two-dimensional non-abelian Lie algebra. So what have we done so far? Well, from our original basis VW, we set capital X being equal to the bracket of those two vectors. And then we argued that we could choose a Y inside of the Lie algebra so that the bracket of X with Y was capital X. And now we're gonna show that this set containing X and Y is a basis for L. So it's like an alternative to the original basis that we started with. Okay, so how can we do that? Well, we're gonna do that using the definition of a basis. So it needs to span and be linearly independent. But we'll start with linear independence. So let's suppose we have maybe some numbers which I'll call A and B inside of the field such that AX plus BY is equal to zero. Okay. But now let's notice that that means that the bracket of x with zero is zero. Well, that's pretty clear because if you bracket any vector with the zero vector, you get zero. We haven't shown that, but that's pretty easy to show. And then that's equal to the bracket of x with ax plus by, because we've just replaced this zero with ax plus by. But now by bilinearity, that's equal to A, the bracket of X with itself, plus B times the bracket of X with Y. But now by the alternating property, the bracket of X with itself is zero. And then by our previous construction, the bracket of X with Y is equal to X. So that means this collapses to B times the vector X. So now let's look at what we have. We have the zero vector, 
is equal to the scalar multiple of b with the vector x. But x is a non-zero vector, meaning that that scalar has to be equal to zero. Okay, but now we can plug this b equals zero up here and notice that that will tell us that a times x is also equal to zero, which means that a is equal to zero. But let's recall what it takes to prove vectors are linearly independent. You wanna start with a would-be linear dependence relation and show that the only way to put these vectors together to get zero is where the two coefficients are zero, or really the n coefficients are zero if you've got a larger dimensional space. And that's exactly what we've done. So what does that mean? Well, that means that this is a set of vectors, which is linearly independent, but we've got two of them. But since we have two of them and our Lie algebra is two dimensional, then that means that they must form a basis. In other words, their linear independence implies their span because we have the correct number. So what does that mean? Well, that means if we have a two dimensional Lie algebra, it's either abelian or we can find a basis x, y, where the bracket of x with y is equal to x. So that really classifies our two-dimensional Lie algebras into these two classes. There's a single abelian case and a single non-abelian case. So now what I'd like to do is look at some representations of these two cases. Now let's look at some representations of those two-dimensional Lie algebras, starting with the abelian case. The simplest way to think about this is two by two diagonal matrices. So if they're diagonal, that means we only have choices for the entries here, this upper left and this bottom right. So in other words, they're of the form A0, 0, B, where A and B come, the, come from the field F. Now you can easily check that if you take two arbitrary matrices from this set and take their bracket, in other words, their commutator, you get zero. So that shows you that you've got an abelian Lie algebra here. And if you want to, you could take the basis to be equal to the two elementary matrices. So in other words, one, zero, 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 and zero, 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 one. That's kind of an obvious basis for this space. Now, what about the non-abelian case? Well, you can take these lower triangular matrices, so A, zero, B, negative A, where A and B come from the field F, and to put this into terms of what we wrote down before, we could take x to be 0, 0, 1, 0, and then y to be half, 0, 0, minus half. And then you can easily check here that the bracket of x with y is equal to x as needed. And this is clearly two-dimensional because we've got two choices, or we've got those two basis vectors. Another interesting way to do this is with the following set of differential operators. So we've got everything of the form A partial with respect to Z plus B times Z times the partial with respect to Z, where A and B come from the field, where maybe these are acting on functions or perhaps they're acting on just polynomials or something. So I'll let you check that this forms the same sort of setup as the thing that's above. And before I leave you, let's recall that I've got this full course that's being built on the second channel math major if you'd like to check out more about Lie algebras. And that's a good place to see. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series review videos before release and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.